Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is The Method on Speaking. It is a pleasure to have you here today. So as you can see, this is my late 15th century Armin doublet, Italian style. So this is part of my medieval set of armor that I'm having built thanks to the uh, to your donations through my crowdfunding campaign. You will find a link in the description below, as it still is an ongoing campaign. So it's a big thank you to all of you who have helped me out with your donations, because this, well, you are the engines of this happening. I'd like to start talking a little bit about what I am reproducing here, so what sort of impression I am choosing. And I'd like to first talk about or mention two very important Renaissance names, Piero della Francesca and Filippo Valli. Now, Piero della Francesca is an uh, Italian painter. He was born in the 15th century in Borgo San Sepolcro, which is in Tuscany. And this specific Armin doublet that you see here is based on his paintings. So, as we look through the paintings of Piero della Francesca, who is one of my favorite paint painters, by the way, of this period, the fact that he's really good at painting full plate armor, like this guy really knew what he was doing, and we see oftentimes Armin doublets showing up, showing up in his paintings. So this is specifically based on the sort of Armin doublets that he painted. Now, usually when we look at his paintings, the most predominant uh, color that we see is red. So why did I choose blue instead? And that is where uh, Filippo enters into the equation of this impression that I am recreating. Uh, Filippo Valdi was a late 15th century a sword master. He was a sword instructor, sword play instructor from Pisa. So again, central Italy, Tuscany. Now, often when we look at the treatises of the sort of fencing that he was teaching and the techniques that he was teaching, uh, he is oftentimes re re represented wearing a blue arming doublet, again, very similar to this. So, I, in terms of the texture, the fabric and the color, I, I have inspired it to him, uh, whereas in terms of the actual overall shape, it is inspired of Piero della Francesca's work. Now, Central Italy is interesting. The reason why I am choosing this specific section is because, well, there is another painter that I'm sure you've heard about, uh, you've heard of when we talk about Italian Renaissance and late Middle Ages, and it's Raffaello Sanzio. Now, this is a painter very dear to me because, well, I've got his name. My, my name is, is Raffaello. And uh, he was born in, he, he was from uh, Urbino, and Urbino is in Marche. So, Marche again is Central Italy, and interestingly enough, this is exactly the region where this was produced. This was produced by Medieval Design, which is a Zeila based in Ascoli Piceno, which is in Marche, the same region where Raffaello Sanzio was from. And therefore, I actually very much um, advise you, if you're interested in getting historical clothing, uh, they do that. So you will find a link in the description below and you can see the sort of work they make. They make medieval clothing, they make Im Roman Imperial clothing from the 1st to the 5th century. They do lots of stuff properly, historically accurate crusader sets with the real cross where it should be very well made and of course they can tailor stuff for you. Now this is exactly what I did in this case. So this Armin doublet was tailored specifically for me. I had to send them all my measurements and I am very happy, very very happy with how it uh, it is. It's excellent and this is the base of the soft kit of a medieval knight. So why did I start from the soft kit. So when we are creating an impression of a medieval knight, we need to get the soft kit and the hard kit, the hard kit being the actual steel armor. Now, lots of people who start to begin this journey within historical reenactment, they are, of course, drawn towards the hard metal, because that's the, the fun part, right? But it is very important to do, if you want to do it right, to first get the soft kit done, because once the soft kit, so the arm in doublet and everything else that goes underneath the armor, is done properly, then, and only then, you can give the pro you can have the proper measurements taken uh, for the full plate armor to be perfectly modeled for your body, because it needs to go over this. And I can't really stress this out enough. The importance of the soft kit so that the full plate armor will work is unbelievable. 
So you really need to get it right. And this time, since I'm not using my money, I'm using your money, guys, um, I really need to make it right. So this is why it took some time. But now that I have this, Craftsmen of Taurica, who are the, uh, which is the craftsman that is producing my full plate armor, and they are going to start forging the armor. Now, in terms of the actual placement of the order, I have ordered the breastplate, backplate, and fold. I couldn't order the full plate arms and the pauldrons just yet because, I mean, I don't have enough funds. We had a very long stop, unfortunately no donations coming for, for the crowdfunding and I understand this, these are tough times but even a five dollars donation can make the difference. In fact I was very surprised with the crowdfunding. I was imagining many little donations instead I've had few substantial donations of people like donating two hundred and three hundred dollars uh, which I meant I mean it blew my hair back well, not really, of course, still got the fringe. It's, it, it really is amazing that someone would want to invest in this project. So what is this project? What am I doing? Now, of course, owning a full plate set of armor has been one of my dreams since I was a, a kid. But with the medieval knight, the prices go up the roof, unfortunately. I could not afford it. Like, literally, could not afford it because I also have, of course, to pay my bills, to pay the rent and whatnot. So this is where you number one stepped in and you helped me. But what project, what am I going to do once I have this full plate armor if this crowdfunding campaign is a success? My channel, as you know, has a comparative key. So I make a lot of VS videos, right? So Roman Empire versus Chinese Empire, Medieval Knights versus this, Japanese versus that, chairs versus tables. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of verses. So the idea of this project is the moment I have full set of plate armor, uh, properly made and tailored for me and I can make some comparative videos between for example the samurai armor and then medieval armor medieval knight armor or Roman gear versus medieval gear and we can actually make videos that will be uh, a sort of applied archaeology if you will experiential knowledge rather than just theoretical knowledge so the idea of reenactment merged together with academic studies I think that's the best way to really understand something now in the past I made a collaboration video with uh, Ian Laspina from Knight Era channel, an excellent channel here on YouTube that deals with medieval plate armor, generally speaking that's mostly what he talks about, and uh, I was wearing my samurai suit of armor and he was wearing his uh, late 14th century English style knightly uh, harness and we made a comparative video in terms of mobility. Now that video is valid but only up to a certain point because for example yes for the range of motion of your arms then we could see how much restriction, restri how restrictive the medieval plate armor would be compared to the samurai uh, set of armor. But in terms of, for example, leg extension, like at one point we started raising our legs to see who could get the best extension, and I did. But did I do it just because the armor restricted me less, or did I do it just because perhaps I'm more, I don't know, athletic? So to really have a full, perfect comparison of mobility, of how encumbering a suit of armor is, and mobility in armor and whatnot, and how long it takes to put it on and put it off, and lots of things, and riding a horse with both, well, the only way to do it is to have the same person wearing a full plate suit of armor, a medieval armor, uh, or a knight, and then a samurai set of armor, and then Roman, if you will, all of these being properly tailored for the same individual. That's the only way to really see how quickly can you run, how quickly can you draw your weapon, uh, how well can you wrestle, how well can you do lots of different things like eating, sitting, standing, etc. So in order to do this, in order to can keep on making content which is focused on, on a comparative key, which also involves the medieval knight, I decided to create this crowdfunding because it was the only way I could afford it. So thanks to you, again, I could manage to pay for the entire soft kit and I could pay for the breastplate, backplate and fold. And today I'm going to wear this uh, breastplate here, which is not the actual breastplate, late 15th century breastplate that I'm having made. This is a late 14th century breastplate, but I just want to show you how plate looks in combination with the arm in doublet anyways. Because in the late 15th century, the difference is that it will be closed in the back as well and it would have a placard but still the breastplate exists in the 15th century as well so we can have an idea and start seeing what will happen actually once the full set of armor will be complete exciting times the arm in doublet is the base foundation that you use to attach your armor. It provides padding, it provides protection against slithering, it helps with the weight of the armor and when it's done properly so when it's 
very tight, it has to be quite tight, particularly in the waist area. And to understand whether you're, if, if your arm in doublet is, is properly made or not, well, it should be, it shouldn't be too tight that you can't close it, of course, or you can't breathe, but it should be slightly uncomfortable. So if you are very, very comfortable and nothing is wrong, then no, it's, there is something wrong with the arm in doublet, in which case it's an easy fix, you just need to make it a little tighter. The reason for that is because then it can accommodate your plate harness and your plate harness will be pushing towards your natural waist, the medieval waist, and the, uh, the whole armour will be resting on your hips rather than resting on your shoulders. Another important thing is that the arming doublet has got attachment, it's got holes used to attach both your legs so that they can be suspended and you can attach your shoulder plates so that they, again they can be suspended. That's called pointing. Now, clearly, you can point your shoulders directly onto your male. Generally speaking, depending on what style you choose, you can either have a full male shirt on top of this before putting on the plate, or you could have male voiders. Now, in Italy, we tended to keep the shirt for a lot longer than they did in either England or um, or in Germany, but both styles are acceptable and both styles of pointing are acceptable. But still having these already built in, it's excellent because it helps with the way the armor will be suspended. It helps with the arms, it helps with the shoulder plates, and it makes the armor a lot more comfortable to use. Each one of you made the difference. It really warms my heart that you believe in the potential of this channel, both in terms of entertainment and education. And I really thank you for believing in me. Thank you for these donations. I know it's your hard work to money and I will spend it in a proper way. I will justify and tell you and report about every single dime I spend because again this is not my money and I will start making more content, perhaps might even make some interactive content again like Samurai vs Knight and you choose who you want to play and like a sort of little bit of a video game to have fun with it and I can get of course every time I wear, I talk about medieval armor and whatnot, I can wear it and I can talk from experience now which is, I think makes a world of difference. All right, number one. So this was a quick um, update to let you know how the situation is going. Thank you so much again for helping me out. And I only ask you to perhaps have a look and uh, click down below to the link to the crowdfunding campaign and just maybe read what the project is about. And then if you choose to donate, well, thank you so much. And if you choose not to, or perhaps you can't, still no problem because I appreciate the fact that you watched this video so far. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.